welcome. My name's Ellen Kirkwood and you're joining us behind the minds of a part as part of the Sydney International Women's Jazz Festival. In this two part video series, I'll be meeting with key collaborators who were instrumental in bringing my epic suite of music to life. Um, but first, before I get into that, um, I want to acknowledge that I am here on uh, Gadigal country within the Eora Nation and I'd like to pay my respects to the First Nations elders past and present and uh, yeah, it's a beautiful place to be. <laughs> um, so I'm here with Jess Dunn. Hey Jess, how's it going? Hey Ellen, thank you for having me today. Um, and I want to acknowledge the Wallamadigal people of the Eora Nation, the land in which I'm speaking to you from today. Great. So um, Jess and I go way back to the very start of Sirens. Jess is the, the band leader of Sirens and the bassist and uh, yeah, one of the masterminds behind the, 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 the whole idea of, of making Sirens, obviously, it was, you know, partly her idea. Um, tell us about it, Jess. Um, well, Harry Harding and I started Sirens a little over 10 years ago, I'd say. Yeah, wasn't um, it like, wasn't it the start of 2010 or like probably, late I think 2009? It was, actually, it was probably late 2009, yeah. yeah. Um, and Harry and I met doing Siemens Young Women's Jazz course, which was started by Sandy Evans. And, uh, you know, the course goes for, I think it was eight or 10 weeks. And we had the harebrained idea that we wanted that to continue beyond that period. And we bugged Sandy about it fairly relentlessly um, until she took us seriously and, you know, gave us a hand. And then we started the band and it's been going ever since. Okay, so before we, we, we have some questions that Seema have sent us. Before we, we go and answer those questions, I'll just tell you a little bit about what you're about to see and hear. So the suite is called Apart. You know what? I've even got this here. Um, Product placement. Yeah, totally. <laughs> um, more, more about that actual CD later. Um, and... Yeah, so basically this suite of music, it's almost an hour long. It's uh, my sort of musical artistic comment on some big issues uh, such as climate change and the refugee crisis. Um, also how the internet is sort of both a divider and a connector of people in so many different ways. And uh, also about like, you know, what's, where do we go from here? How do we react? What do we, what do we do about this? Um, so yeah, the performance you're about to see will is was the premiere performance at the E.O. Myers Theatre in um, at UNSW in 2017. The suite also features Sandy Evans, that who we've mentioned, and will be on the next video tomorrow night, uh, chatting with me. Also, pianist Andrea Keller and uh, vocalist Gian Slater, both amazing musicians, absolute legends, and also it features. Um, projected visuals by Cleo Mies that are beautiful and artistic and uh, add a lot to, to the overall experience. So we're gonna go to Seema's questions now. So the first one's for Jess and it is, what attracted you to leading a big band? How do you unify so many musical personalities? Um, I guess, you know, musically, it's a format that has a really long history in jazz so in that sense it's steeped in a lot of tradition but it also has a great deal of flexibility um, for lots of reasons including the sheer amount of people involved um, and from a musical and artistic perspective that was um, one of the things that we were interested in engaging with um, I mean also as well as the, the artistic goals there was sort of these social and political goals of amplifying you know voices of female and gender diverse musicians and you know doing that in a big band has a lot greater kind of punch than doing it in a trio uh in terms of unifying personalities i'd say it, i think it was approached more in the sense of trying to find ways to make space for different people's voices to be expressed and also what I think is kind of those shared social goals that we talked about. Um, yeah, I don't know if we were successful at every turn, every sort of turn, but that's what we were aiming for. Yeah, I mean, I think 
certainly, um, you know, remembering remembering back to some of our early gigs and people sort of expecting maybe a little bit of a gimmick, but sort of going like, oh, actually, like it's not just another big band. Like, you know, Sirens has has its own really interesting, really vibrant, exciting sound as well. And I think, yeah, we we quite quickly got a pretty good following, right? Yeah, well, yeah, we were really lucky in that front, actually. And I think it was always about not just this kind of sea of people, but finding ways for those, you know, the individual voices within that sea of people to kind of shape this unique sort of sound and this unique approach. Okay, so next question is for me. It says, what were the biggest triumphs and struggles of the recording process? So, yeah, the recording... I love that you're asking yourself things. Hi, me. (laughs) Seema is asking me, yeah. (laughs) Ellen, what were the biggest triumphs and struggles of the recording process? Oh, that's, that, that works a bit better, doesn't it? <laughs> so the recording, so a year after the, the, um, the premiere that you're about to see, we recorded this, Ooh, and you can buy it from Earshift Records. Um, so we recorded it at 301 Studios. Uh, Bob Scott, um, assisted by Owen Butcher, recorded it, and uh, Bob also edited it and mixed it and mastered it, and I was there and sort of part of the producing process as well. Um, I think the 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 uh, uh, the struggles I suppose were all kind of leading up to the like it's it's a lot to organize it is mainly I think that the biggest thing was it you know with such a huge band and Jess knows all about this with such a huge band it's just uh you know timetabling rehearsals um making sure like you know, everyone gets all the information, answering people's questions, timetabling the actual recording, because there were some people who couldn't be there all at the the whole, you know, the entire time, Um, all that kind of stuff that, uh, yeah, it's logistically quite difficult and also financially quite expensive. Um, So I feel like that was sort of the most stressful part. The actual recording process itself was was actually quite breezy. so Bob got us all in the one room as if it was a performance. We didn't use headphones or anything. Um, we just were all in, in the one room. There was a little bit of separation between um, the horn players and the, the rhythm section. So, you know, cause there's this uh, spilling of sound between different microphones, but you know, because Bob is so excellent at what he does and he does a lot of live recordings, a lot of large ensemble recordings of various kinds. Um, he's an expert at that and he was able to, you know, you can still, uh, you can still edit that if, if need be. Um, and we also, <laughs> whether or not this was, um, a great idea or not, I was thinking the other day, we didn't actually go in and lis- re-listen to the takes. Like maybe maybe just early on we went in and listened to one take and I was like, oh my God, that's amazing. Like I think we just listened to Andrea's solo. I was like, oh my God, it's incredible. And then after that, it would just be Bob sort of talking through the speaker going like, yep, I reckon we got it. Let's move on. And we did. And then we just we got through everything quite quite easily and we had more time for breaks i wasn't stressed and i think that when the because i was i'm out the front directing the band most of the time i wasn't stressed and that reflects on the musicians if i'm not stressed um they're not stressed and if we're having long breaks we feel relaxed and that really 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 i think impacts on on the performance and everyone's mental um mental energy i suppose All right, so here's a question for both Jess and I. How has the jazz landscape changed for women and gender diverse people in Sydney and beyond since the start of programs focused on inclusion, like Sirens, this festival, SEMA's Young Women's Jazz Workshops, the Young Women's Jazz Orchestra, and what are the next steps? Why don't don't you start? Okay, I mean, that's a mighty question. Yes. (laughs) Um, I think, you know, there's definitely more awareness there's more conversations, there's an increased amount of programs. You know, I think the SEMA Young Women's Jazz Workshops that Sandy started, they've been around a really long time. They focus on musicians at a particular point in their journey, generally pre-tertiary education. And I mean, they've changed the musical lives of myself and heaps of my colleagues. Um, Yeah. And beyond that, I think the Young Women's Jazz Orchestra was started by Rosie Mark Smith and I as a way to kind of take that, 
take it take that program further and have something all year round for women and gender diverse musicians and Ellen leads that now um, I mean I think I'm not actually sure the professional landscape has changed a great deal it has a bit and I'm really happy for Ellen to disagree with me on that um, I think like ongoing we probably need to sort of have clear measurable goals in place to find out if we're actually achieving what we want to be achieving with all these initiatives and all these steps we're taking and obviously that takes time takes money takes people that are able to do that sort of research and I think it also is complicated because there's other structural issues at play like just generally how hard it is to be an artist in this country and you know eke out a living so we also have to acknowledge how things like that intersect as well. Yeah, totally. Yeah, I mean, you're right. Like there's, I think there's still a long way to go. I, from my perspective, I feel like it's improving, but slowly, like, um, yeah, like definitely the fact that it's, you know, if when I compare right now and what I see and what I hear people talking about to, to 10 years ago when Siren started, I think that it's, something that is much further to the front of people's minds um, and people are a lot more likely to notice like hey wait a minute this band is just dudes um, yeah. <laughs> um i like you know those those just dudes bands there's still plenty of them but i think people are a lot more likely to go hmm and other types of diversity as well like hmm this band is all white people um so yeah uh, that's all to the good i think but yeah there's still a long way to go and i also think that something further that we need to do is, you know, balance this thing between, you know, engaging, you know, people's voices that need to be amplified. So engaging, you know, women and gender diverse musicians' voices, because there is nothing like lived experience. We need to ask people what they need and if these initiatives are serving them. But I also think we need to balance that with some of that labour being done by like organisations and institutions and even people that feel really represented in the scene already and think about what they can do. Yep. I will ask you this question, Ellen, so it's potentially a little less awkward for you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what are you most proud of in these movements and what exciting or interesting moments should the audience listen out for? Um, okay, so... Uh, thinking of a part one so I'll just tell a, a little bit of a part one is is about the internet it's about it's the, the, the full title is the internet wonder and malignance so the first bit is like wow isn't it amazing isn't it like we can connect and the like particularly in the early days of the internet was just like oh my god this is going to change everything and it did change everything but not necessarily always in a great way um so like it's pretty awesome that um you know we've had the internet through the the, the um and like zoom and everything through through COVID-19 but uh, also we've seen how much misinformation can be spread and how much damage can be done via the internet so I guess that um, the, the the first part of a part is a, about that sort of thing and uh, I think my my favorite moment in it is when it gets dark it's sort of like all kind of pretty and floaty for a while and then it sort of gets to this sort of like demented kind of video game kind of um kind of vibe that's my um, favorite part too. Hey, nice. Um, and then in a part two, so a part two is um, about the refugee crisis. Um, I think the title, yes, it's a part two on the refugee crisis. So um, yeah, in this one, I, the, it sort of goes through a few sections. In the first section, I'm sort of trying to imagine what it might be like to be a refugee, sort of what what events, what happenings would maybe lead me to feel like I had to flee my country, feel in danger, have to protect my, my family, things like that. So I'm, I'm trying to sort of um, imagine that kind of thing and, and, a, and a growing sense of um, anxiety and, and fear and danger. And then the second bit um, is quite sort of, oh, there's, a, there's an amazing, um, um, Andrea does an amazing solo in between that part and the next. Um, and uh, then the second bit is uh, just kind of, it's full of rage <laughs> um, because I, um, yeah, I, I, I went out and uh, saw a few documentaries 
about the refugee crisis and particularly Australia's treatment of, of refugees and it made me really mad. So that's what that's about. And then the last section is sort of like a kind of peaceful, calm co comment on sort of the like the quiet strength of a lot of, 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 of people and, and it's kind of a moment of, of hope. So the solos, Gian has a sort of atmospheric um, opening thing. She's got some beautiful loops and some uh, textural vocal stuff, which is very cool at the very, very beginning of a part one. Uh, then uh, Andrea's solo and then in a part two, Gian's got another solo at the start. Uh, beautiful um, lyrical vibes and then Andrea's got like a cadenza on her own solo and then Sandy goes a bit crazy on um, soprano sax. Okay so that's all for the questions. Um, thanks so much for joining me Jess. Thanks Ellen. And I uh, hope everyone enjoys the first half of the apart suite and hope you come back tomorrow and watch the second half which will be preceded by a chat with me and Sandy. Bye.
Thank you.